right, what's up everybody? Backjack JW coming to you. Well, yes. <laughs> You've been around my channel, uh, you know that yeah, the Smith & Wesson double action revolver is my choice of a double action revolver. And I like revolvers in general, but there's something about that gets the juices flowing when you're talking about a Smith & Wesson double action revolver. The look, the feel, oh man, if you've ever handled a Smith revolver, double action revolver here, uh, you just you know what I'm talking about there is just something about it everything on it amazing it, they're just like ah, it's a, and a piece of art and it's a quality quality gun okay um, yeah I got started uh, collecting these things early on and it's just kind of what I love to do uh, as far as uh, collecting a gun this is my favorite gun to collect the Smith & Wessons I always just I've said it once I've said it before on this channel I've got an obsession with Smith & Wesson <laughs> um, this was actually the one that I chased for a while this is a pre-model 10 a six shot k-frame snubby these are certainly um, something cool I, I really enjoy this gun a lot and I actually have a, uh, a video called story of a gun uh, episode not the first episode of why I chase this one so much it's really neat uh, this one's got a lot of different features that are extremely vintage on it uh, for one just being like a five screw you got the uh, four on the side plate one under the grip and with that fifth screw being at the trigger guard and that is actually the screw that puts the tension on the spring for the cylinder stop hand right there. So, okay. Um, going over a little bit of the things, if you notice all my blued guns, or in general, my Smiths, all have the original wood grips. Um, except for one of the blued ones does not have the original grips. Maybe I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> or, um, of course, minus the, uh, this is the new style uh, grips that they're doing. This is my 629 beefcake of a snub right there. Six shot, 44 Magnum end frame. This has got those uh, newer style grips that they got on it. Kind of a different checkering. It's more like a scales. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Um, I enjoy this gun. This is the only one I have so far right now uh, with the key lock. And the, of course, the frame mounted firing pin. Everybody, uh, it's interesting, they always talk about that, I always hear about that. Oh, the frame mounted firing pin versus, you know, say the um, the hammer mounted firing pin. Uh, if you look back, it, you know, going all the way back to 1955, when Colt uh, came out with the Python, and, and is uh, actually noted on Wikipedia, it says, I think the, they call the Python the the Rolls Royce of revolver. Some people went as far as saying it's the best revolver ever made. Um, if you actually look at that gun, that gun has a frame mounted firing pin. Interesting. Okay, so let's kind of get over here. What do we got? What do we got going on here? We got the uh, K frames. Mostly what I got is K frames, K frames and N frames on here. I don't have a uh, J frame anymore. I used to have a Model 36. I uh, sadly let that one go. I'll get another one someday, but. Uh, Let's uh, look at these right here that you see. These are Model 10s, Model 15, Model 19. These are in K-frame. K-frame is really a great size. Uh, I always say the K-frame is kind of like, well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, kind of like a Glock 19 <laughs> in size-wise. A K-frame, four-inch barrel, you really, uh, this was the, the ultimate, gun of its time everybody carried that uh, this one here the model 19 with its history and uh, Bill Jordan and all that it really a great uh, this is a great all-around gun it's a 357 Magnum you got six shots you know with the four inch barrel which I think I like the four because the four is that perfect uh, that perfect length you know it, it's perfect for the uh, the duty work it's perfect for shooting you can shoot far you can shoot close um, it's uh, not bad. It's not a bad uh, a length to have. <laughs> All right, so I got a Model 15. This is actually my father's gun. Model 15, uh, K-frame, six shot, 38 special. The difference between basically these two is the caliber. Uh, you got 38 special and 357 Magnum. I've always liked. Uh, I'm kind of in. I like the 357 Magnum because mostly I just shoot 38s. The benefits of that, you can shoot both. 
Uh, if you got a 357 Magnum, you can shoot 38 Special, or you can load it up and shoot Magnums out of there. Uh, I mostly just shoot uh, 38 Specials, you know, light, lightweight, comfortable 38 Specials, because I like to keep my stuff in, in I want it to last forever. Not saying that uh, if you shoot a bunch of, uh, you know, 357 Magnums that you're going to blow up or anything, but you'll, you'll see some things that happen. Um, some of the things that start to happen to these things is... Uh, the cylinder starts to get some shake and forward to end shake as well. You know, they have the side to side, forward to end. Um, you know, I always like to test them by pulling the hammer back, uh, letting him go, and um, holding the trigger back and give that cylinder just a light wiggle and see, okay, uh, yeah, it locks up. And do that to each and every one of the cylinders and make sure that it still locks up good. I also like to inspect the the lead-ins and lock-up lugs or sections right here on the cylinder if they're marred up or anything you know you always wonder if that person did the old cowboy slamming that cylinder uh, shut that you see in the movies so much that's terrible to see that um, worst is when they do the old spin and then slam it while it's spinning because while that thing is going around and then it, it slams in there shut it comes flying into that that hand right there on the bottom the lockup hand and it just puts a lot of stress on the revolver that's unnecessary abuse really uh, so um moving on over here these are the end frames the dirty hairy special actually seen this recently on the video on the channel uh the my model 29 six inch 44 magnum the dirty hairy <laughs> this is my dirty hair gun. This is the first model 29 I bought and love it and just absolutely love it I've trucked this thing around so many times to the gun range and fired it uh, Taking it uh, in a shoulder holster or whatnot Nice uh, vintage grips that I got on there. This is a cool special awesome gun. It just uh, when you enter dirty Harry now one thing I learned about this is for sure shooting 44 special out of this kind of gun is just a dream. It's awesome. It's so smooth. It's uh, in fact, if you actually remember, if you watch Magnum Force, Dirty Harry says, it, when he, um, I believe Davis uh, from one of the motorcycle cops, the bad guy, <laughs> says, "What kind of load to use in that 44?" And he says, "It's a light special. With this size gun, it gives me better control with less recoil." <laughs> All right. And I got the big boy right here. This is the Model 29 with the 8 and 3 8 barrel. This one has made an appearance or two on the channel. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this one's darn near in mint condition. I bought this thing and just, uh, I remember uh, taking a chance on it because it was on an auction and there wasn't very good pictures on it. But I went with my... Uh, my old uh, gut feeling and what that was being when you're kind of only seeing pictures of these things it makes it hard to, to make that decision if you can't go into a gun shop or a gun show and handle these things. I looked at the line that goes from uh, lockup to lockup. and If you see that right there, there's a faint line on this one. This one has not been shot a lot or handled a lot. I mean, now that can tell you two things it's been shot a lot or it's been opened and closed and you know that kind of a thing a lot it's been handled a lot uh, I'll just give you a, a little example my really well used uh, 29 you can see the ring is definitely there this one has been shot and used and I in fact I, I replaced all the uh, lockup um, parts in it and springs so it now locks up pretty tight and ready to go uh, that's the thing that, you know, of course it happens. You shoot a steady diet of magnums. Eventually that's just what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, this one, that's what I went with. My, when I all I had was a few pictures and they weren't very good pictures, mind you. I just went with that, that instinct of, okay, well the line right there from lockup to lockup is not very deep. So I just said, okay, I'll take a chance. And um, when it came into my friend's uh, shop, he, I came to see it when it finally arrived, and he said, man, you really, because uh, the price was fairly low, he said, you really scored because this thing is, is darn near mint. And I swear, 
whoever had it before me, I don't think they shot it very much or they cleaned it very well because I went over it. Uh, literally, I like if you want to use the term, the, the old white glove uh, once over, and I couldn't find any specks of burnt carbon. I swear, they, they've had to have cleaned the thing really well. And uh, lock up, everything is great. Of course, there's hardly any turn ring there. So, uh, one of my favorites, it seems like an awfully big gun, but I'll tell you, it's not, uh, it's not too bad. Um, well, then again, I'm a Smith and Wesson guy, but any, any larger than that, I think would be kind of silly. <laughs> but um, the 29, the 629, the stainless, the only stainless, um, actually, I think this is the only stainless gun I own right now. Uh, this one here, uh, I just wanted this thing. I, oddly enough, you know, call me strange. I, I remember seeing this in Tales from the Crypt uh, season two, the, the cutting cards. In fact, I think they used the 44 special version. But um, I just remember seeing uh, the guy whipping out a snub nose 44 Magnum, and just something about that just made me go, "What? Who in the world? What? What would you do with that?" <laughs> And uh, when I saw it, I just I have this thing for snubbies, and I and just the beefcakeness of them. I, I really like just the beefy one. <laughs> if that makes any sense to you, uh, you just got to be into this stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, when I saw that, I I just said I, I gotta have it. And I remember the uh, the movie um, uh, uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, George Clooney's character carries the Astra Terminator Snubby Forty Four interesting uh, gun uh, the the um smith also had one they i don't they don't make it anymore which is I, i'm a really i need to get i want to get one it's uh the 329 um night guard or something it's it's basically like a blued one of these and i've seen blued uh 29s obviously they're blued um or nickel but uh i've seen blued 29s that were snubbed off so that, that's pretty neat. But yeah, fun gun to shoot, really comfortable. I shoot a lot of 44 specials in this. I have shot the Magnums. It's not terribly bad. Uh, it's not something that's gonna jar your your wrist or you know just make you jack you up or anything like that. But uh, it's a handful, you, you know, it's definitely a handful. But the nice thing about it, there again, only in the 44 Magnum, you have this big strong revolver and uh, you can shoot 44 special or 44 Magnum. And as a hand loader, uh, you know, I, if I want a little something more warm, I you know load up that 44 special a little bit hotter, you know, kind of get to play Elmer Keith a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. So the Model 15, Model 19, uh, the Model 19 here, mine is uh, pinned and recessed, and what that means is you see the cross pin through the barrel, and they countersunk the cylinders. So when you put a round in there, it sits flush. And interesting thing is the cylinder is slightly longer on these things because they the whole round sits in there the whole round is is held in there then nothing there's no lip riding up so the classic profile uh, of looking at it straight on like this and being able to see brass it's a little harder to see brass on one of these and uh, this definitely is a vintage thing they set back they quit doing that uh, but they only did it to the magnums uh, you know, uh, the as far as the 29s go, I think it was Dash 2 was the last time they did that. Uh, as far as pinning and recessing, and the Dash numbers is the, usually you'll see like this one is Model 19, you know, Dash uh, dash 4. Uh, it's uh, the, the higher the number is more the changes they've made. A good book, if you're interested in this stuff, is the standard catalog of Smith & Wesson's. Um, they just released the number 4, the 4th edition. I've yet to buy it. But it's really neat because they'll take you through all the dash numbers, what they mean, what they've changed, what they've eliminated, what they start doing differently. Uh, so that's uh, one thing. And of course, uh, you got some of these like the uh, the Model 15 Vintage, and uh, it's a 38 Special. It does not have countersunk cylinders, but it has a pin through the barrel. That's another indication that it. Uh, this is an older one with that pin through the barrel. Um, my dad bought this, I think, in the 70s, to be honest with you, and uh, he put those, uh, these are Smith & Wesson grips, uh, he put these on there, they're smooth grips, there's no um, checkering on there, but uh, yeah, this is daddy's gun, so I keep this one, this is like the sentimental one of the bunch, really neat, shot it quite a bit, 
it's a it's a great pistol or <laughs> revolver i love it and uh, of course the 10-5 snubby six shot this is the first smith and wesson i've ever bought the smith first smith and wesson revolver i ever bought and uh yep six shot k-frame snubby love this gun i you know it's again one i'll never get rid of just because this is um definitely special near and dear Got a nice, that nice uh, glossy finish as usual with, uh, as Smiths do have, the original uh, wood grips. Square butt, see there, it's squared off, and uh, you probably hear that term tossed around a bit. Here's a round butt, and uh, underneath there, the, the uh, frame actually is rounded off. So you can get uh, conversion grips that will go from uh, square uh, it'll take a, a round butt to convert it to a square butt in a sense so basically you can have something that looks like this on a grip like that but i for this particular gun i like this like uh, you know shorter grip on there uh, eventually i may look at uh, maybe a different company and get some uh, like uh, what is it alt ultima grips or something like that uh, they have some pretty nice ones but um, all right, and speaking of grips, the one blued gun that is not the original grips is actually this one. These grips, even with the medallion in there, that's because when I bought this gun, it came with uh, Packmeyer grips, the rubber ones. Of course, as uh, far as function and everything, they work great, but I'm a traditional classic guy. And this one here, I bought these off of eBay. And this is, uh, these are made in Thailand. Can you believe that? They're 30 bucks. And such great work they've done for that. It's hard to find them. They're, they pop up here and there. They're not always available. I think there's different people showing up with them and whatnot. But I have a bunch of um, other stock grips that I have in just a collection or anything. I actually have a video on that. Smith & Wesson revolver grips. You can check that out. But uh, the grips are getting more expensive. So as kind of a, a little tips here for you, if you're going to be buying these things, looking around at the uh, stores for them, you know, um, if they don't have the original grips, you can always ask to have a little discount because to replace these original grips have gotten rather expensive these days, especially, especially the end frame uh, guns like the Model 29 and whatnot. The the original grips on these things have gone up in price. Uh, not not much, not like the Colt Python grips or anything, but they're pretty up. They're pretty uh, pricey now. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna close it out. Hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy talking about them. Smith and Wesson uh, double action revolvers, close up HD. Thanks for watching. I'm Batjack JW. Like, share, and subscribe, and check out the other content.